not long ago, I claimed that your CI-CD pipelines are wrong. Back then, I was complaining about problems related to treating all tasks as one-shot actions on pipelines not being designed to react to events other than a push to a git repo and on them being too monolithic. Watch this video if you missed it or don't, since this is something completely, completely different. Today I'm going to continue complaining about CI, CD and pipelines, but I will focus on a different set of problems. Today I will make some outrageous claims like CI pipelines should not be running only remotely. Pipelines should not do orchestration of tasks. Pipelines should not be defined in declarative format. Remember, declarative format, no. And pipelines should not depend on specific tools. Today's session aims to explain how you should ditch pipelines almost entirely, no matter whether they are done in Jenkins, GitHub Actions, GitLab CI, Circle CI, or any other tool you might be currently using. Today, I will tell you that you should use pipelines almost exclusively to trigger execution of tasks defined somewhere else. Most importantly, I will blame your laptop for all those angry claims I will make. There you go. Whatever you hear from now on, it's your laptop's fault. Today's conversation will be dark, but hopefully there will be light at the end of the tunnel. I will not only tell you that you're doing things the wrong way and that your laptop is to blame, but I will also provide a solution. Let's jump into the first claim. There are quite a few problems with CI pipelines that are typically not addressed with the tools we use today. And the first, and potentially the most important one, is that they are designed almost exclusively to run remotely. You might be using Jenkins, or GitHub Actions, or GitLab CI, or Tecton, or Argo Workflows, or any other tool that is running on a remote server, and you're triggering builds through Git webhooks. That's clear, right? You might be thinking, that's the way to go, but I am here to tell you that it is not. Pipelines are not supposed to run only remotely simply because most of the work that requires execution of pipelines is done both remotely and locally. You're running tests while you write code, right? Or if you're not a TDD practitioner, you're running tests before you commit the code. Is that correct? It must be, right? If you say that it is not, I think you should be ashamed of yourself. You're pushing code to a Git repo without even having an idea if it's working or not. You're probably building binaries or container images so that you can run your application. You're probably doing that locally as well. You're likely performing many other tasks locally. You might be linting code, performing security scanning, and so on and so forth. The point is that you're not only writing code and pushing it to a Git repo. If that's what you're doing, and I hope you're not, your feedback loop is too long, since that means that you're waiting for pipelines running remotely to tell you whether you made silly mistakes that could be detected in a matter of seconds if you run some of those tasks locally. We could solve those problems by creating scripts instead of defining everything in pipelines. We could have a script called buildsh that performs all the tasks related to building binaries or container images. We could have a script called unitestsh that would run unit tests. We could have a script called deploysh that would deploy the application somewhere. Now, if we convert groups of tasks into scripts, we could solve a few issues we have with pipelines. We could run those scripts locally when needed, and we could rewrite our pipelines to use those scripts so that we do not repeat ourselves too much. That's something I've been advocating for a long time. I always believed that pipelines should be dumb. Instead of writing all the logic inside pipelines, we should have scripts that pipelines would call. Those scripts can run anywhere, including locally, and the job of pipelines executed remotely would be to orchestrate execution of those scripts. But that is not a good idea either. If you end up with a bunch of shell scripts, 
one for each type of the tasks. Pipelines are indeed becoming orchestrators of automation defined in those scripts, but local execution becomes a problem. Just as pipelines are orchestrators of scripts, we need something to orchestrate them locally. I do not want to run one script after another every time I make a change to my source code. That might result in more time orchestrating scripts than actually writing code. Write a few lines of code and execute build sh, wait to see the outcome, and depending on whether it was successful or not, execute unit test sh, wait to see the outcome, and depending on whether it was successful or not, execute deploy sh, wait to see the outcome, and it's ridiculous. You get the point, right? I do not want to waste time orchestrating scripts while developing. So, what do we do? I could create Uber script that would do the orchestration, but that is problematic as well. Now that we established that some, if not all, the tasks executed through pipelines should run locally as well, we can turn our attention to orchestration. Apart from executing specific tasks, pipelines are deciding what to run, when to run, how to run, and where to run tasks. If task A fails, stop the execution of the pipeline. If task B is successful, execute tasks C and D in parallel. Take the output of task D and generate a list of tasks that should be executed if both C and D were successful. That is what we call orchestration. Now, I can say that pipelines do orchestration well, but that would be only partially true. Assuming that by pipelines we mean tools running remotely and typically executed as a result of an event like a push to a Git repo, they do orchestration well. But only as a result of specific events. We need that orchestration to happen not only when we push changes to a Git repo, but also when working locally. I need something to execute and orchestrate tasks on my laptop or to trigger that execution from my laptop. Now, the important thing to note is that I'm lazy. I do not want to define that orchestration twice, once for remote pipelines and once for local ones. Hence, I need a way to define that orchestration of tasks in a way that will work both locally and remotely. That means that I cannot use typical pipeline tools like Jenkins or Tekton, since that would result in too much hassle setting them up locally. Nor I can use GitHub Actions or CircleCI since they work only remotely. Now, to make things more complicated, not all the tasks are always executed and there are variations depending on where they are running. For example, when working locally, I probably want to deploy my application into a Kubernetes cluster, local or remote, using kubectl or Helm. On the other hand, when running the pipeline remotely, that same application should probably be synced into a permanent environment using Argo CD or Flux. And that means that the pipeline should probably push some changes of the app manifest to a git repo. I could solve all those problems by creating a huge shell script that would contain conditionals and loops and whatever else I might need to execute the tasks while respecting the variations between ephemeral and permanent environments. If I do that, I could run that script locally and also execute it through whichever pipeline tool I'm using. That would remove the need to define orchestration twice. Now, I do not like that idea. To be more precise, I do like writing shell scripts as long as they're relatively simple and short. Pipelines I'm describing might be too long and too complex for a shell script. To be clear, when I say complex, I don't mean that they contain complex logic, but complex enough to be a burden to define and manage as a shell script. I should probably write all that in Go or whichever other language I'm comfortable with. But wait, why not use a declarative format? Why Go or any other language? Now, you might be freaking out because I just said that we should define pipelines or to be more precise, orchestration of tasks using a programming language. While everyone knows that pipelines are typically, in most cases, defined in a declarative format. Jenkins might be one of the exceptions with its uh, DSL based on Groovy, but others like GitHub Actions, Tekton, Argo Workflows, and GitLab CI, to name just a few, are all declarative. 
YAML, JSON, HCL, and so on and so forth. They are all declarative formats, at least when pipelines are concerned. Today, however, I will tell you that's wrong. We got confused. Declarative formats like YAML, JSON, HCL, and others are meant to describe a state of something. This is the VM or the DB or the cluster I want. This is the exact specification of what something should look like and I'm telling you that in a declarative format. Why? You might ask. Well, declarative formats are easier to understand for both humans and machines. If I go to a Git repo and open a YAML file, it will be relatively easy for me to understand the intention behind a desired state of something. It's a Kubernetes cluster that should run in AWS. It should have medium-sized nodes, whatever that means, and it should start with three, three nodes before cluster autoscalers kicks in. If I would get that file in a pull request, it would be easy for me to review it and approve it. I would know exactly what the intention behind that change is. I would also have an easy time to deduce what the actual state is at runtime. This is the cluster, this is the node group, this is the cluster out, and so on and so forth. If I would want to deduce the exact desired or the actual state, I can simply take a look at it. Now, if I would look at the imperative definition of state of something defined as, let's say, go, it would take me much more time to deduce the same. There would be conditionals and loops and other imperative constructs that would make it much harder for me to understand the intention behind the code since I would need to translate those constructs into a mental model of what that code is trying to achieve. The same is equally valid for machines. It's not a coincidence that Kubernetes API, for example, expects YAML. It's declarative with clear intentions of what the state of something should be. Now, you might think that I'm advocating for a declarative format to define everything. But that is not the case, quite the opposite. Today, I want to talk about the cases when declarative formats are not a good idea. Today, I want to state that there are cases when declarative formats are a norm, yet we should abandon them in favor of using imperative languages like Go, Python, JavaScript, or whichever other language you're comfortable with. Now, I already talked how Q is a great language to define Kubernetes resources that will be later on converted into decorative YAML. You can check those videos if you're interested to know more there over there. Today, I want to attack CA pipelines by saying that they should not be defined in declarative formats. Most of the tools will tell you that they should, but I am here to tell you that they should not. Pipelines are not about declaring the state of something. They're about executing tasks. They're glorified cron jobs orchestrated through conditionals, loops, and other imperative constructs. We already went through those constructs. Build something, wait to see the outcome, and depending on whether it was successful or not, run unit tests, wait to see the outcome, and depending on whether it is successful or not, deploy the app, run functional and integration tests in parallel, take the output, parse it, generate a list of other tasks, depending on what's in the output, and so on and so forth. That is not the state, and that is much easier to define as code. There is no point in trying to figure out what the intention is since it is not the state of something. And even if it would be, it might be different. It might vary from one build to another and from one environment to another and from one... You get the point. It's not the state. Hence, there is no good reason why it should be declarative. Hence, it should be a shell script or Go code or Python or whichever language you're comfortable with. So. All we have to do is write all the tasks with all the variations in a programming language of choice, compile that into a binary, and execute that binary locally or remotely from inside the pipeline or locally or from anywhere else. Doesn't matter from where or where you're executing it. That should solve the problem, right? Well, not really. There's still one more issue we need to address. There's still the problem of tooling. 
Different tasks require different tools. I might build container images with Docker locally and Kaniko remotely. I might need to sign images using Cosign. I might need to package manifests uh, using Helm or Timoni. I might, well, you get the point. Different tasks require different tools and we cannot assume that all those tools are always installed. The server where pipelines are running might or might not have Timoni or Helm or Cosign or whichever other tool we might need. The same can be said for laptops. Now, that's not a problem when running remotely through pipelines. Jenkins adapted to use containers. Tecton and Argo workflows were designed exclusively around containers and so on and so forth. Most pipeline tools support containers one way or another, and all we have to do is say, run those tasks in this container, and then switch to a different one for those tasks, and so on and so forth. However, that poses a major issue. To begin with, if you want to switch from one container to another, we need to define execution of tasks inside the pipeline, and we already established that that is not a good idea due to the need to run them locally as well. Most, if not all tasks will be executed from inside a large script or more likely through Go or whichever programming language you choose. So we cannot rely on pipelines to provide the environments with the tools we need. That needs to be done from inside the code we are writing and it needs to work no matter whether that code is executed locally or from a pipeline. Now, Given that the automation is written in your programming language of choice, we can solve that by spinning containers from inside that code. However, it would be nice if there would be a set of libraries, maybe that would help us out. What I'm asking for seems to be something that many would benefit from. Hence, it would be silly if each of us would start from scratch. All in all, here's what we need. We need a tool that will enable us to define CI tasks in a way that will allow us to run them both locally, from a terminal or VS Code or whatever you're using when developing, but also remotely from inside pipelines. That orchestration of those tasks should be context aware so that behavior is appropriate depending on the environment. Finally, the solution should have minimum assumption of the tools required to be pre-installed and use containers to run all the tasks or most of the tasks. Does that sound like a reasonable set of requirements? If it does, the only thing left is to find a solution. That was the task I set in front of me a while ago. And after experimenting with a few options, I think I have a good candidate. So let's take a look at it. Actually. Before we take a look at it, before we dive into Dagger, let me display a pipeline for a silly app I used in the past. That is the pipeline I'm currently using. Can I run it locally? I can't. Should I rewrite all that into something that can run locally? Maybe. Should I find a tool based on a declarative format like Scaffold? Probably not. How will I deal with differences between local and remote executions? Through conditionals. Definitely not YAML. What happens when I start uh, needing conditionals, loops, and other imperative constructs? Shell scripts? Maybe. When that shell script becomes too complicated, should I start using a programming language like Python or Go? I probably should. Should I instruct people to install all the dependencies? Nah, I shouldn't. Should I rewrite the code to use containers so that there are no mandatory dependencies? I definitely should. Now, the question is how? That's when I started looking for something completely, completely different. That's when I rediscovered Dagger. Now, to be honest, my past relationship with Dagger was not a very good one. I tried it out a while ago and discarded it right away. I did not see the point in using it. My head was full of whys and whats. Why does it exist? Why would anyone use it? What is its purpose? And so on and so forth. I did not see the point. I could not justify its existence. So I abandoned it. Then a few months later, after being bombed by people asking me about it, I gave it another try and the outcome was the same. There were whys and whats and I abandoned it. However, at one moment I started asking the questions 
we just discussed. I started looking for a solution that can run both locally and remotely. I needed something to both execute and orchestrate tasks. I needed a solution that leverages containers. And then, then it clicked. At that moment, my brain remembered Dagger. I got it. Why's and what's were answered. Partially, at least. So, what is Dagger? It claims to be, and I quote, CICD with code that runs everywhere. Now, that is misleading because that claim is either not true or just plain silly. I will let you decide which one it is by the end of this video. For now, let's take a quick look at it. I can execute something like dagger run and pass it the command I want to execute to run. Since this is the first time I am running dagger on this machine, it will take a while until it pulls the images, downloads, code dependencies and do whatever else it's doing. So let's fast forward to the end of the process and there we go. It took a minute and a half to run everything. If you scroll to the top of the output, we'll see that Dagger published a Docker image to TTLSH, which is ephemeral uh, container registry running locally. The code is written so that when running locally, images are pushed to TTLSH and when running from a pipeline to a real registry. Further on, it updated the money manifest and produced YAML that can be used to deploy the application to a local Kubernetes cluster. There was no need to have the Moni CLI installed since Dagger used a container to run it. From the end user perspective, the Moni is an implementation detail and just happens to be the tool I use to define my Kubernetes manifest using Q. If you're unfamiliar with the Moni, check out that video. Finally, it deployed the application to a local Kubernetes cluster. I could have added tests and security scanning or anything else I might need while developing the application. And all that would be executed locally through containers and without the need to have any specific tools installed on my laptop if that's how I wrote the code executed with Dagger. Now, as a proof all that happened, I can retrieve Kubernetes resources with kubectl at all and we can see that the application is indeed running. Now, one of the great features of Dagger is caching. It took around a minute and a half to run everything locally. Let's see what will happen if I run it again. This time it took only 15 seconds. Dagger used cache for almost all the tasks since I did not change the source code. Even if my code changed, it will still apply intelligent caching and I should expect all subsequent executions to be considerably faster than the first one. Now, let's take a quick look at the code itself. As you can see, I wrote it in Go and you can choose any of the supported languages, which I believe are Node.js, Python and Elixir. There might be others. So please check the documentation if your favorite language is not one of those that I mentioned. Now, I won't go through the whole code since you might not be using Go. And even if you do, I don't think that the code is important. You know how to write code, right? What I will point out that apart from the normal code, I use Dagger library in quite a few places. For example, here I'm saying use Dockerfile to build an image. Now, you might say, what is the point in using Dagger for building images when I could just as well write a few lines of code that would do the same by executing Docker image build? If that's what you're saying, you would be right. However, Dagger has its own mechanism to build images without Dockerfile, and if we do use it, caching of those images will be even more efficient. And we would get some additional features like exporting files from the image into the workspace, building multiple images, and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, I was not ready to give up on my Dockerfile, and that was one of the reasons I discarded Dagger in the past. But then I realized that I can do so much more with it. Here, for example, I'm using Timoni to build YAML manifests from Q definitions. Then I'm taking that output and using it to apply manifests to a Kubernetes cluster using kubectl. Further down, I'm using YQ to modify Q definitions, then retrieving the modified file and storing it locally so that it can be pushed to Git. I am also pushing the money package to a container registry. The details are not important. What matters is that most of those operations are executed inside containers, so I do not have to guess what is and what isn't installed on a laptop 
from where Dagger is running, and I can enhance the flow by importing or exporting files, uh, injecting secrets, capturing outputs, and so on and so forth. Everything is running in containers, as long as that's what I choose to do. Another important thing to note is that some things are executed only locally, while others are meant to be executed only when running in a real pipeline, which in my case means GitHub Actions. That is not something specific to Dagger, but rather the fact that I'm defining the behavior through code, in this case Go, instead of trying to figure out how to do conditionals, loops, and other imperative constructs in a declarative format. Now, as I already mentioned, this specific Dagger setup is meant to be used by me while developing, but also by GitHub Actions. I want to run tasks when I push changes to Git. Some of them will be the same as those running locally, some will be variations of those, and some will be completely different. All that logic is now defined in code, and all I have to do is to modify my GitHub Actions workflow to use Docker. So, while the previous version of my workflow was like this, now it is like this. I chose to keep code checkout in the Actions workflow since uh, when working locally, I already have the code checked out. Similarly, I chose to push changes at the end of the CI flow also through the workflow since I already have uh, had that defined and I have no intention to replace my local git commit and git push commands with Dagger. Everything else is now replaced with a single step that installs Dagger and executes it. Excluding Git operations, the whole workflow is now defined in one place and executed locally from GitHub Actions or from anywhere else. There is no unnecessary duplication and I can run the tasks related to this project from anywhere and without any dependency but to Dagger CLI itself and Docker or some other container runtime. Dagger library offers quite a few features that I will let you discover yourself. There's also a SaaS or software as a service or cloud option, which I'm not sure whether it is worth paying for, but you can check it out yourself and decide whether it's worth it or not. Instead, let's finish this discussion with Dagger pros and cons. I started the journey that led me to Dagger with the following set of requirements. I wanted to be able to run my CACD pipelines both locally and remotely. I wanted to define pipelines through code instead of uh, declarative formats. I, I love YAML, I like YAML, but only for defining the state of something, and I prefer imperative code for everything else. I need my conditionals and loops and functions and other constructs, right? I did not want to depend on specific tools, or to put it in other words, I wanted the solution to run in containers. Finally, I wanted a solution that covers the whole SDLC, or what others would call CI and CD. And here's the question. Do you think that Dagger met all those requirements? I will answer that question soon. I will also elaborate on my earlier statement that the claim that Dagger is CI-CD with code that runs everywhere uh, is not true or is misleading. But before we get there, let's go through the pros and the cons, starting with the things I did not like. Actually, there are only two negative things. There is no option to initiate the Dagger execution every time I change my source code. It would be awesome if I could just run Dagger in the background and let it run whichever tasks I set it to run every time I change my code instead of repeating the same command over and over again. That is not necessarily a bad thing, but rather something. Something I would like to see since many of the tools used to perform local tasks uh, do that. Now, I know perfectly well that I can combine Dagger with other tools or write that loop inside my code. After all, it's code, so I can do anything I want. Yet, the first option to combine it with other tools defies my requirement to not assume any tools being installed apart from Dagger and Docker. The second option sounds better, but I'm too lazy to do it. And more importantly, that's such a common use case that I would expect Dagger to have it out of the box. Second, and last, is that it cannot replace pipelines. There is no option to run Dagger in a server and wait for webhooks from Git or other events to initiate execution of tasks. As a result, it cannot replace pipelines like Jenkins, GitHub Actions, and others. What it can do is run as a task in those pipelines. 
that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm guessing that its intention is not to replace pipelines, but if that's the case, I think that uh, that's a missed opportunity. Everything else is truly great, as long as we understand the scope of Dagger and ignore its false claims. It is open source with Apache license. That's great. It would be even better if it would be in a foundation so that Dagger folks cannot change the license willy-nilly as some other projects, which I'm not going to name, uh, but projects that did it in the past or recently. Still, Apache license should be good enough for now. Next, um, it works everywhere, as long as Dagger is installed and there is a container engine. That can be Docker, but also any other Docker-compatible engine like Containerd with Nerdcuttle or Podman. There is also an experimental option to run it in Kubernetes. Everything can, but does not have to run in containers. I don't need to second guess which tools are installed, nor to force anyone to install anything besides Docker or some other container engine and Dagger CLI. What else? Oh yeah, caching is amazing. That might be the strongest point of Dagger. It speeds up execution of tasks considerably, as long as we know how to enable it in remote pipelines. Next, uh, I love that it chose to be based on real code instead of declarative formats used by majority of other similar tools. As I already said, I love YAML, but only for defining the state of something. Declarative formats are not meant to be used for defining things like CI pipelines. Finally, documentation is great. I had no trouble finding the information I need, and it is full of well-written examples. Now, let's get back to the claim that Dagger is CI CD with code that runs everywhere. You will likely not use it for the whole continuous delivery or deployment simply because it does not work well with events, just as almost all other pipeline solutions don't. It's enough to have, let's say, syncing done by Argo CD with the need to execute tests after deployments are finished uh, to realize how that does not work well uh, without events. Watch that video if you would like to know why I said that. At best, I would say that Dagger is a CI without CD part tool, as long as we consider CI a set of tasks executed before we start dealing with events other than Git webhooks. All in all, it's a great tool and I strongly recommend it. I'm switching CI portions of my pipelines to Dagger while still keeping the rest of the SDLC, what you might call CD with Argo CD, Argo events and other tools. It is the tool that can fully replace your local workflows as well as equivalent, but not all, tasks in your pipelines. That's what I was looking for, after all. I did not expect it to replace all my tasks, but only those that run both locally and remotely. That's what it does, no matter the false claims, and it does it well. Big thumbs up from me. There we go. That's a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.